let's kick off. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon. Hello, everyone. I'm Daniel Salter, and I'm delighted to be joined for the next hour by Mikhail Lomtadze, the CEO of Caspi. Now, Caspi is no ordinary company, and Mikhail is no ordinary CEO, having led the company's transformation over the past decade and a half from a small SME focused commercial bank to today's tech powerhouse. Indeed, at Caspi, Mikhail is CEO in more ways than one. He is not only the chief executive officer, but also the chief ecosystem officer, which perhaps gives you some idea about the importance that Caspi places on its customer experience. Now, Caspi's app is now used regularly by half of Kazakhstan's population, and Caspi's success has played a very important role in the tech transformation that we see happening in Kazakhstan as a whole. So, Mikhail, welcome. Hi. Now, last year, marked a very important milestone for Caspi with your successful IPO in London and Astana. Congratulations on that. But of course, you haven't stayed still since. The stock price has doubled and your full year results that you published this week met, or more than met, all of the 12 KPIs that you set out at the time of your IPO. And your message sounded pretty upbeat about 2021 on the earnings call you held on Monday. So the outlook sounds good. We'll come back to that in a bit. But first of all, I want to kind of rewind the clock um, and set the scene, um, some of the background to the Caspi story. So you first met Michael Calvi, the founder of Bering Vostok, I believe, in New York in 2002, around the time that you were graduating from Harvard Business School. You joined Bering Vostok and became a partner in 2004. And in 2006, you led the investment into what was then a mid-sized bank called Kaspiski Bank, which is now, of course, Caspi. So my first question to you is really, did you expect that you'd be still leading Caspi some 15 years down the road? Or were you expecting a fairly quick restructuring, turnaround, and sale of the business? And at what point did you really get a clear view of the potential um, of, of the Caspi story? Was it coming out of the 2008 crisis um, when there were big opportunities um, given the hit to some of the local banks? Or was it the emergence of new technologies or were you prodded by your shareholders? Uh, how, how did the story emerge for, from, from Bank Caspi, Kaspiski? Well, I mean, uh, I would say that... Uh... The most important thing uh, in uh, in in sort of you know anyone's journey and myself more specifically is to have the you know right people with you right so I mean I'm I'm pretty sure that most of us don't really have the visibility for another ten and fifteen years but the one thing you can always make sure that you work partner uh, with the best people with the most honest professional. That can actually inspire you, and very importantly, at some point, you know, you, sort of you inspire them, they inspire you. It's like a road walked on a, on a, on the both directions. So I guess uh, I was really lucky uh, myself. Uh, you know, if you take if you take today's perspective, that uh, people that I met at Bering Vostok and and Mike uh, uh, specifically, and, and and partners at Bering Vostok, Lena Ivashinsova, and then you know Vyacheslav Kim, who is a mm -hmm partner at Caspi that we met in 2006 uh, together. Actually, it was late 2005. And then now today, if you take Caspi team, I mean, the incredible management team that we have uh, in every stage of the life, you know, clearly uh, one of the most important uh, achievements. It can be achievement, it can be luck, it can be both. But, you know, having the right people with you was the most important uh, asset for me during the last 15 years. So that basically is, is sort of the most important foundation of any success. But then uh, going back to your question in terms of the emergence, the business model and you know how we have uh, uh, become uh, uh, the, the super app driven, you know, more of a technology company that integrates all these services into one super app. Uh, I think that was a you know basic question when uh, we asked ourselves, it was around uh, 2012, when we said that, you know, the whole world talks about, you know, financial companies being squeezed by technology companies. Mm -hmm. And I think we were brave enough to say why financial companies cannot actually become technology companies, why financial companies cannot become 
an, an e-commerce uh, platform, why they cannot become payments platforms, why they cannot develop a, a single app that integrates all the services. And, you know, eventually the management team that uh, runs Caspi now, uh, you know, in response to this uh, challenging, uh, uh, challenging uh, sort of billion dollar question from today's perspective, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that uh, the management team just was excited to do something completely different than everybody else does. And that's why we are where we are today, the most popular uh, super app in the country. Absolutely. And I, I, I guess if you look at the, the transition, it's, it's something, you know, it's, it's something like a reverse Alibaba in some ways. So you start off with a bank, you modernized it, simplified it, jettisoned off some of the legacy businesses, uh, converted it into fintech and payments, um, a marketplace and, and beyond now. So, you know, to what extent do you think starting with a bank helped you or did it just require more heavy lifting to get a, a bank in, into the kind of fin, fintech space? Um, well, I think I think the foundation is still uh, the foundation is still sort of uh, you know the the idea behind the, the 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 desire of of the of the team and the and the shareholders and partners and you know key employees just to to do something remarkable with their with their lives to basically build the company which uh, has not been uh, built anywhere else. So that you know I'm not the banker. Most of the guys on the team are not bankers, but I think we have the best management team from the innovation perspective, you know, ability to, to develop technologies, adopt technologies, uh, you know, embrace uh, innovation. So that was the most important piece. The bank uh, or the financial services uh, really helped just because, you know, if you, the way we view financial services is something which, you know, sort of puts together the users, puts together the merchants, uh, you know, enables transactions. And I think we, by developing the best in class, you know, uh, both financial services on the FinTech side of our business and being able to evaluate the risk by the world-class standards, I think that's, a, that's an incredible, uh, that's an incredible competitive advantage. But clearly, you know, this, this team could have started anything else uh, uh, equally successfully. We were just, it just happened that we we had the bank and we wanted to build the best bank and then we wanted to build the best uh, technology payments and e-commerce company. But uh, the, the team is the key in all this execution. Abs absolutely. And, and your, your, your team and yourself, you're, you're famous for being uber focused on the customer experience and having almost an Apple-like simplicity to your products. And certainly some of your presentations of new products do have a sort of Apple flavor to them um, that, that I've watched online. Um, and as you mentioned on your earnings call earlier this week, most of the KPIs that you set uh, within Caspi are actually based on the quality and the usability of the products rather than on kind of pure product profitability metrics, as I understand it. Could you tell us a little bit more about that philosophy, how it works in practice? Um, and are there going to be any changes to that now that you're a listed company? Um, well, the, the philosophy of, in, of the company, you know, starts from the, from the mission and the way we define our mission is to develop the innovative uh, uh, services and products that involve people, improve people's lives. And there is no industry specified in that mission you know there is no specific business actually specified it's all about you know that we want to develop we want to use the technology to develop the services that improve uh, and improve people's life and and when you think about the company which you know strives and aims to be innovative actually uh, the it's it's a it's a live or death uh, kind of question in terms of the quality of the products so quality of the product is number one and there is a very simple rationale behind it. If you are an innovative company, you want to introduce the new products, the new businesses, you have to make absolutely confidently 100% sure that your current products and services are loved by your consumers and your users. Because if they don't really like your today's products, they are not going to use your tomorrow's products. So that's why it's extremely important if you want to innovate, if you want to come up with the new ideas, your today's today's consumers and users have to be absolutely happy that's why this kpi sort of net promoter score the quality of the service sort of speed of providing the services this is the number one the number one sort of criteria the target uh, of the most of the product in the company i mean we're talking about uh, of the most employees in the company we're talking from front frontline employees that serve clients by interacting with them 
both online and, uh, and by phone or by product development teams, engineers, top managers. So, you know, the most important KPI in the company is actually, you know, net promoter score, which helps us to measure, you know, whether we're improving our, uh, our clients' uh, lives and whether we provide them a high quality service. And probably that would be, if you take a long-term perspective of the company, that is the most important competitive advantage, the culture that we have built and, and, uh, and the focus to, uh, to build a, a super high quality product, technology products, uh, and perfecting them constantly. So it's obviously, it's obviously working. Uh, we've got now half the population um, as a monthly user of the caspi.kz app. And I believe that over half of these are now using the app on a daily basis, which is pretty impressive. Um, from here, where does it go? Is it all about driving engagement and getting the sort of engagement levels up from, I guess, Alipay kind of levels to WeChat kind of levels? How far are we down, down that road? Um, is, that the, is, that, is that where it moves to now? Well, there are, you know, the, the power of our business model is actually that there is a, there is a, there are, you know, multiple venues of growth uh, and actually a profitable growth, which is very unusual for technology sure. and fast growing uh, companies. Uh, since it's a super app, so our users can actually reach the product seamlessly and we can very efficiently uh, distribute or position these products in a, in a single uh, app uh, integrating the, the 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 experience in a on a screen of the smartphone. Now the the growth that you know will be coming and is coming. You know the 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 one which you have mentioned. We we continuously grow in terms of users, so that strategy is there, and we have successfully proved it, and we continue growing really nicely this year. Second is uh, actually the, the 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 volumes of the business per user, right? So if you take uh, uh, we're just scratching the surface in terms of the in terms of the number of uh, you know the purchases that users are making, number of payments they are making. Um, if you take only our payments platform, you know uh, about eighty six percent of our uh, the, today's users are users that we have uh, acquired during the last three years. So very new users. But if you take the earlier cohorts, let's say users of two thousand sixteen in our payments platform we increase the volume of the business almost 14 times during the four years. So there is a lot of potential to grow the business uh, per user. So GMV per user, sort of uh, TPV or revenue generating TPV per user. This is, this is another uh, avenue of the growth. The third uh, avenue of the growth is that we're also constantly adding new services, right? So things like travel, we've, uh, uh, we've acquired fantastic small company last year in uh, close transaction in August, uh, and then launched the travel vertical in, in December. And now we're almost 10% market share in just several months. So it just tells you this, you know, the, the benefits of the super F strategy. And then the fourth vertical, which we've also started to do the uh, second half of last year is actually merchants. Because historically we have started with financial services, then we went into payments, we went into e-commerce, we went into travel, uh, and all of that was around the users. And now we have realized that we actually have the, the huge universe of merchants that are growing really fast and the merchants themselves have the needs on a daily basis that we can actually help them to grow their business. So we've launched last year Caspi Pay uh, and now we're building extremely actively the ecosystem of services around the merchant needs. And we're starting exactly the same way. We're starting transactions, financial services, and then we will continue adding the new sort of added, uh, added value services like marketing, advertising capabilities, uh, and so on and so forth. So just to put things into summary, the users are growing continuously and we still have the room to grow. The business per user, uh, the new verticals which we are entering around the users, and now we're opening up a, a great uh, potential for us to, to build the business around the merchant needs. Okay. Five I would mention is the regional expansion. So, okay, we'll come on to the merchants and the regional stuff in a little bit, but just to, to stay on the consumer side, just for a moment, if I may, if you, if you look at perhaps some of the, the Russian tech leaders, Yandex and Mail, I mean, they're, they, they've been quite active in trying to disrupt sort of physical markets like taxis and food delivery and, and th those kind of activities. You haven't so far. Um, is that something that you would think about or it's, 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 it's too capital intensive, doesn't fit into your super app strategy? And if you would think about it, 
how would you approach it? Would you prefer to do that with somebody else um, to to partner up with, bring some third parties onto the app, or 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 indeed, would you would you think about disrupting some of the other verticals like search or social? Uh, there are a couple of things about. First of all, if we take a step back, you know, the the there are great companies like Yandex, uh, for example, in uh, in in Russia, but there is also a very big difference uh, of Caspi strategy to Yandex is that we have a a single super app, which is very unusual. It has been talked, uh, it has been talked uh, recently about the super app. Now people having all these multiple apps trying to squeeze them into one app. That's mm -hmm. much harder than if you build this sort of the app strategy from the day one. Uh, so uh, in our super app is clearly the, the what makes us a uh, differently and then if you think about our technology which is behind it actually every single app or every single service which is in the app is already standalone sort of service mm -hmm. it's almost like we pull all these different apps together into the one in, into the one uh, caspi kz super app so we do have the inspirations to uh, uh, digitalize uh, vertical by vertical category by category i can't really say whether the next you know we're going to travel now which is very exciting vertical I cannot really um, tell you whether the next vertical uh, will be, you know, food or taxi. Uh, uh, we 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 watch very carefully and with 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 a lot of enthusiasm how you know intensive competition just basically kills the margins in these verticals. Sure. Uh, and we will we'll see when 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 there is a we either take a decision to enter the new verticals or we might take a decision to provide services to those players like mm -hmm. payments, for example, or we might take a decision to give those services a space in our super app. And once they join our super app, their economics will dramatically change, right? If we're talking about savings on the marketing, integration with the payment solutions, integration with the financial solutions. So yeah, we are proactively looking at different verticals. Uh, travel would be the one which we're developing very uh, actively. Uh, everything else, we'll, we'll just see when there is the right time to, to go in. And then again, if we go in, we either bring them on, on our platform and make them a winner or, uh, or we provide them services like payment services and fintech services so they can grow themselves on a, on a, on a standalone basis. Okay. And um, it, perhaps it's, it's actually a related question. You know, if, if, I, if I look at how you deal with logistics and fulfillment in, on your, in your consumer business, you're very much focused on the on using software solutions to tackle that that issue, while many of your peers globally are spending hundreds, if not billions, of dollars on rolling out infrastructure and claiming that that might protect them from competition down down the road. What what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, our thought uh, around the uh, our or let's say you know I've just if this if I describe the basic the strategic principles, you know, Apple doesn't have to own the factories to produce iPhone, right? Uh, Uber doesn't have to own the cars and taxi drive to employ taxi drivers to basically ride, ride people and provide services to them. So from that perspective, we believe that the technology from you know today gives us an opportunity to help other businesses to grow. So on the delivery front, for example, we basically are saying that you know we can continuously develop the 3P uh, delivery platform when we help you know other courier companies. We have. Uh, last mile providers, the, the 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 first mile providers, the the same CD delivery couriers, uh, we we can help them to continuously grow and and build their business rather than sort of us uh, going after uh, building the infrastructure, which mm -hmm. you know it, it's this is the same concept of as as a marketplace for items, right? So instead of carrying the stock, you actually help other sellers to sell the items. And the same view would take on the delivery. So instead of sort of building the capital intensive warehousing capabilities, which is probably the easiest decision to make, even though most expensive, just do it yourself. I think the more complicated is actually to build the marketplace and the platform for courier companies. But once you built it successfully, you know, you can, you can scale, um, you can scale over time. And if, if those courier companies and our partners, as well as merchants, they need the financing in order to develop their business, then we have a financing capabilities, which we which we, we know how to provide financing. So we would rather you know give them uh, financing and capitalize on their knowledge of building the the the, the logistics infrastructure rather than ourselves going into this business. Uh, so that would be our strategy as of now. Uh, 
we will see what happens in the future, but today it's working. We are scaling extremely quickly. We have a lot of partners that want to onboard and we have the partners that actually are willing even to invest themselves because we give them a lot of volume. I mean, we're number one e-commerce platform in the country and, and having orders from us gives other people confidence that they can develop the business, make their own margin and, and therefore expand the capabilities on, the, on, the, on, the, on their side, like hub stations or sorting stations, last, courier, uh, last mile couriers and so on. Okay, perhaps uh, staying behind the mirror, as it were. Um, so, you know, the, the merchant ecosystem under Caspi Pay, um, I think you're up now, is it to 71, probably higher, 1,000 merchants, um, up from 12,000, I believe, at the beginning of last year, roughly. Um, that's an unbelievably fast rollout, I guess, driven by the, the QR product in Kazakhstan. What, do, what does 71,000 mean? How, how many merchants are we talking about eventually in Kazakhstan? Is, are you, are you, are you re reaching full rollout yet, or is there still a long way to go in the actual rollout process? Um, and then, you know, how, how far are you down that line that you just spoke about in terms of providing those new products like invoicing, inventory management, inventory financing, and, and so on to, the, to those merchants? Um, well, with the merchant's business, we take exactly the same approach like we've done with the consumers, which means we, we, we are getting the basic sort of what we call ground zero products, uh, right? And, the, and those products would be the sort of, the, the, you know, everything that drives transactions. So those would be the payment products, would be the financing product. Invoicing product is actually the same as a, as a payments product. So payroll management, basically the products which get the foundation right. The way we always look at the building the businesses is, is like, you know, first, what is important is the is the foundation you built. Like when you build the house, right? You got to make sure the foundation <laughs> is right because if it you helps. don't get the foundation right, you cannot go beyond certain heights. So we're focused now on the, on the merchant side in terms of let's acquire the merchants, give them value in terms of the payments, financial services, and the transactional services. Um, I mean, we can quadruple easily. Uh, we don't really, we just sort of, uh, uh, scratching the surface. I mean, there is a, a, a big potential in terms of the merchants. We're going after the merchants, which are both large retail chains, medium companies, small companies, and micro merchants. And the beauty of our beauty of our business and the and ability of our management team to scale across the board is remarkable. So it's not like it's exactly the same way like with users. We're not going after specific segment. We're going actually after all the segments. Mm -hmm. Roughly, you would say now, you know, we had about. 70 plus thousand devices, uh, active devices uh, as of February. If you mentioned, I mean, we have increased dramatically uh, almost uh, six times. Uh, and th those devices are split almost half half between the, uh, the high transit intensity uh, sort of environment like supermarkets, but uh, low intensity environments like micro merchants on sort of florists on the street, for example. And, and, the, and the devices which we are rolling out, we're rolling out across all the segments of merchants and the management team is just, you know, the guys are doing great job on, uh, on, on getting these products uh, to the merchants and then explaining them how to onboard, how to work. And we have also remarkable retention rates on the merchant side. So big opportunity on the merchants. And then once we build this foundation, just another sort of final uh, remark on that. Once we build the foundation, then of course the merchants have a lot of needs on their daily, uh, uh, activity, right? They have uh, needs about in to manage inventory, manage accounting, uh, manage marketing, manage their people, HR. So there are a lot of, there is a whole universe of different type of products that we could, we could provide merchants in order to improve their business. And we can do it either ourselves or in partnership with, uh, with the different companies that develop products for merchants. Okay, if we, if we look over the next few quarters, what are you seeing on the, on the ground now in Kazakhstan in terms of the kind of consumer dynamics? Uh, the, the government's done a pretty good job of keeping the economy going throughout the COVID crisis, spending a bit more money to keep, to, to, to keep, to keep things on track. And there's obviously a lot of talk of pent up consumer demand um, globally as economies rebound. Is that the same in Kazakhstan? Um, and to what extent are you easing up slightly on what was quite a cautious lending stance you had last year um, as the economy in Kazakhstan recovers. And also, I mean, I wonder actually whether we might see something of a risk of maybe app fatigue this year. I know that I don't want to sit on my sofa anymore searching through the internet in the evenings. I want to go out and meet my friends and spend real time with people. Um, what, what do you think about that? 
Daniel, the, the Apple fatigue, what does it mean? I, app, app, app fatigue. I don't want to sit there scrolling through websites and apps on my mobile phone anymore. I just want to be face to face with my, my friends and, and colleagues um, over the, re the rest of the year. Well, uh, I mean, the beauty of our business model is not just that we are sort of online, right? So we took it, we basically took this, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the environment when, when the, you know, most of the people are at home during the lockdown, and, and, and uh, online, you know, help the online uh, part of our business. But actually our business is all around needs of the consumers and our business is extremely remarkable dynamics. It's almost 100% in the mobile, uh, in your smartphone, right? In the mobile mm -hmm. app. So from that perspective, actually Caspi with its services is always in your pocket. Sure. And, and some, of the, some of the services are related to your daily needs, like you're paying utility bill, electricity, but also the mobile commerce, which basically provides you a digital experience in a, in, a, in a street retail. I mean, that concept is is very sort of popular recently, but we've started this uh, several years ago, like guys like Klarna, Affirm, uh, are, are building after pay, are building such capabilities. And, and we have done this many years uh, successfully. So from that perspective, actually, what we would see is, is that our, our business will continue growing nicely just because the street retail opens and we have the products which are suited for that experience on the user side. Uh, and the, another one which we've just taught uh, the, we talk a little bit is a merchants, right? So as, as merchants open up, we'll have another avenue of the growth on the, on the merchant side. We also, what we see and we observe that there is a, a recovery on the consumer side. Actually, if you, if you, if you walk the streets, I mean, yes, uh, all of us are trying to be, careful and wearing masks, but actually the, the activity in Kazakhstan has been picking up nicely. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't hit last year as severely as many other countries. I think that uh, from that perspective, government did, uh, did a lot of good things, including you know, distributing social benefits and supporting people where Caspi also played an instrumental role on the delivering social benefits through our super app. I think around two thirds of those payments were delivered with our help. So as economy opens up, you know, what you would see, you would basically see just, uh, you know, all our businesses uh, continuously growing. Uh, uh, the mobile commerce will continuously grow as the retail uh, space is opened up. Uh, merchant uh, onboarding is growing really fast, which is fueling both e-commerce and the mobile commerce. And the transactions are growing because now you have more in-store transactions uh, rather than just purely online e-commerce transactions. So we actually will be beneficiaries of this uh, rebound as well, which is very unusual, right? I mean, people, you know, most of the online or technology companies, you know, they might lose some growth to sort of other companies as they, as they activate together with, with, with the users going on the street and the stores opening up. But in our case, we benefit from both. As a Good. Okay. I, you said during your earnings call that you're now expecting payments and marketplace to reach more than half of your net income for 2021, I think for the first time. Is that a trend that's going to continue? Is it, would, would you see would you see payments in marketplace increasing the share of the pie when it comes to profitability over over the next five years or so? Yes, I mean that's just a natural result. On the one hand, it's just a natural result of the payments and the marketplace growing faster than uh, than our fintech financial services uh, uh, platform. Uh, uh, and those those transactions are just much they're much more intense. You know the users getting engaged there in the first place so they start from the payments and then they move to the shopping and the marketplace but also if you think on the, in the from the from our ecosystem perspective you know it's it's actually natural if, if you think about the financing right like you, you don't just need the financing you want to buy something with it sure. right so because you want to be some buy something with it this payments platform and marketplace platform is actually the front end of the user relationship and the financing is usually the back end so what, as we develop this ecosystem and we've grown dramatically, you know, the growth rates have been uh, much faster and therefore the, the, the income and net income, obviously, because of operating leverage growing even faster than the top line. And, and, and naturally our business, again, the, the financial products are sort of back end, you're saving to buy something or you're getting financing to buy something. Mm -hmm. And the front end and much bigger business is becomes what you want to buy or what you want to pay for. And that's is a payments in the marketplace platforms. Okay. I mean, sticking with this uh, ecosystem question, I'm, I'm totally fascinated as to why some countries 
went down that super app route, uh, Kazakhstan being a great example, but there, there are several similar examples ac across Asia, um, but not really the, the case in, in many of, of the, the Western markets. Is that just a historic anomaly? I mean, it's a great advantage for you right now, but you know, over time, are we going to see any convergence in the two models that we see around the world? Well, I think the future, I mean, the, the markets which would permit this type of convergence, mm -hmm. right? Because when you have like a, in the US, uh, it probably would be difficult for PayPal and Amazon to, sure. to, to agree anything, yeah. To converge because they're by themselves already in established companies, even though PayPal has announced the super ad strategy on its last annual call. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, if you listen to their call, this is something that we have been talking for the last two years about. So pretty, pretty interesting to, to hear that from PayPal. So actually, what, what we believe that future, and especially in emerging markets, the, the, the future is actually when you have these three kind of businesses uh, integrated around the user. It, maybe it might not be the same company, but the end user having the access to those sort of the e-commerce e marketplace payments and financial fintech products through a single app. That, that probably would give it, that will be the most powerful combination. And, and I think this is exactly why you know, companies like Yandex realizing that and they're thinking, you know, about financial services. Uh, Wildberries is acquired, Russian e-commerce player acquiring a banking lab, bank with, for a banking license, thinking about financial services. So the emerging markets, uh, you know, have provide such, a, such opportunities. So I think future is actually around those type of companies. Now, Asia will, be, will have been a, a good example, the super apps, uh, like, uh, I don't know, Goja, Grab, but you know, they, these guys, you know, started from the high frequency sort of taxi kind of uh, services. And now they're capitalizing on the high frequency by adding additional additional products, which exactly the right strategy. In Caspi, we had a different approach. We basically said, you know, we, we, we are lazy, right? I mean, we, we, don't, we don't really like to run the multiple brands. We don't like to run the multiple mobile apps. We, we, just, we just think that's, that's not, you know that's not that that's not that wasn't smart from our perspective. So our strategy was actually that we want to have a one brand, we want to have a one super app, and we want to have a services uh, accessible through one super app uh, from users. And it proved to be the, the 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 right strategy. And we couldn't find any reasonable explanation why we should have multiple apps. The the question was very simple: uh, why we cannot have a single app? True. Why? Everybody was talking about single purpose app, single purpose app. That's 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 the that's the future, single purpose app. And at Caspi, we're sitting the guys and we're saying, why we should why we should have uh, multiple apps? Why we cannot have one? And then there was no there there is no there was no other answer than just uh, we need to have a technology to enable it, and then where where we go? And so now we are with a with a single app, which is growing really fast. Good. So let's uh, just just touch a bit on a competition. You're you're very profitable now. Um, your profile has risen with the IPO. Uh, do you feel quite secure from competition from within Kazakhstan or from Russian competitors or from China? Um, who is anyone ever going to compete with you and when? Um, or is the hurdle pretty high given your market penetration so far? Well, the the way that the view we we really take of the of the competition is actually. You know, we don't really like to compete, which which means uh, for if we have an, a possibility to sort of the partner and and provide the payment services to to some of the e-commerce players, we would be willing to do so. So from that perspective, I would say, you know, in general, we have, a, yeah, I mean, the, from the outside, it does seem that we are competing, but from the inside, we're just looking for the ways to grow across all our platforms, and uh, and in the future, you would also see that as you know, probably giving opportunity to other third-party apps to be on our super app. Uh, uh, and because we have, uh, again, we have this, uh, you know, marketing reach efficiency through the single app, because we have the, you know, the, the, the largest payment network, which helps us to connect uh, buyers and sellers. Uh, you know, from that perspective, we just, you know, we have a lot of opportunities, opportunities to grow. We're multiple times bigger on e-commerce than Wildberries or, uh, or AliExpress, and we expanded uh, our market share another year on the e-commerce side. So, you know, we have we have uh, our ecosystem in includes a lot of um, a lot of partners, right? The merchants uh, are part of it, uh, and when you are 
when you think about competing with Cusp, you don't really compete with the Cusp as a one company. You actually compete with this entire ecosystem of different services, which are part of that of that experience. And you know, more courier companies we have working uh, with us on our platform, more merchants we have, more users we have. You know, the 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 the, the more sort of difficult it would be to uh, the difficult it would be to sort of compete because you are actually competing against this ecosystem approach and not just a single company with a single platform and single service. And we, from our side, again, we, we are uh, determined to help other businesses grow, especially the merchants. And we also will be willing to uh, work with other apps and give them, uh, you know, part of our traffic and technology through the super app. Maybe not the short term, like in several months, but uh, in the future, we will be willing to do that. We're just too busy developing our business at the moment. Sure. So you're listed. You're listed now. Your your share price doubled since the IPO. Great vote of confidence in you, the management team, and and the Caspi model. Um, so you touched upon it earlier, but is Kazakhstan big enough for you? You've done a little bit of exploratory work in in Azerbaijan, I I, I think. Um, what what are your thoughts? You obviously have the the right secret ingredient, as it were, for Kazakhstan. And as you've mentioned, different countries have different ecosystems. Um, do you think the model is adaptable? To new markets would you have to partner up um, what would a partner bring could you talk a bit about that yes of course i mean kazakhstan is our home market so we're extremely excited that uh, we're making our employees our users our partners proud because that's the company which uh, went public you know i mean it, it it is a really a unique business model developed in the country so and we we would like to expand outside uh of Kazakhstan. If you think about our expansion capabilities, the, the, the technology which is behind our super app actually allows us to enter other markets with any uh, uh, with any specific uh, service which you see in our app. I mean, if we decide to enter with the payments, we can go with the payments and then add e-commerce. If we decide to enter with e-commerce and the marketplace, then we can add payments at a later stage. And the financial services probably will be adding at the uh, at the last, just because of uh, capital intensity. We understand this business perfectly, but it's a capital intensive. So we'd rather go with the payments in the marketplace. So we're looking at the, at the, at the markets around uh, and, and the former you know, sort of CIS and the, and the region. Uh, we believe that we can, we can export our uh, technology just because everything is in the app now. So very efficiently we can expand. I mean, if you just think about e-commerce, uh, you, you know, uh, for our marketplace to deliver items to some of the cities in to Uzbekistan is actually cheaper and quicker than some of the cities wow. in Kazakhstan because of the size That's of awesome. the country, right? So from that perspective, yeah, we're we're super busy with the with the Kazakhstan, but we are uh, you know getting more and more active on uh, looking at the business opportunities outside of Kazakhstan. We're in Azerbaijan already. Mm -hmm. The marketplaces for new and used items, cars, and uh, in the real estate business is growing very nicely. Uh, Two million users already uh, on the car and uh, and general items marketplace platforms monthly in in a, in a ten million people country. That's already a big success. Uh, so we continuously we continuously looking at the opportunities. So you will see us be expanding regionally. Okay, and uh, Kazakhstan, could you talk a little bit about Kazakhstan as a tech hub? I know the government's had that priority for several years now, and you know, you've obviously had a great success there. Uh, you've got a big in-house product development team, you've got Caspi Labs. Can you do everything you need to on the ground in Kazakhstan, or do you have to outsource things to other countries to get the talent you need? How, how, how is that looking? Uh, well, the one thing which we're doing, uh, you know, ourselves is, you know, constantly you know, sort of educating people and bringing people uh, uh, up to speed with our uh, technologies and, uh, and, 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 and developers are, are extremely sort of important, uh, uh, in, in, important professionals. We're constantly sort of uh, searching and uh, for, so we've developed this, what we call Caspi Labs, which is a very nice uh, uh, initiative actually started by our own guys. I mean, we didn't have this idea. Let's start the corporate university, sort of some sort of theory, right? I mean, our data guys and uh, basically said that, you know, we have this incredible data capabilities. We need the manpower. So in, back in 2014 or 2015, I don't remember exact year, they said, okay, let's just start sort of uh, providing the public, uh, public courses on big data. Uh, analysis, the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, and then 
you know, we we would we would give certificate to those people so they can actually get employed elsewhere, which is good for the country, and then we can also employ them directly. So we went a big a big. Uh, it was a very interesting journey. So today, actually, the Caspi Labs is is both big data, uh, but also the engineers uh, uh, development. Uh, uh, this year, we had about uh, close to ten thousand applications. Uh, and we, when the, about 200, 250 people will graduate. Uh, so we accepted, uh, you know, the, we accepted people that have uh, have have a, have a definite ratio of being successful. <laughs> and though and out of these graduates, you know, some you know hopefully will be working at Caspi, uh, uh, but that has become a major major problem for us now. So we have internal capabilities. We constantly invest. And we have just incredible team. I mean, the team is, inspires uh, each top manager the same way as top manager, and even more inspires uh, them. So another thing uh, that uh, we also are, are are doing is we're actually uh, working on uh, employing the, uh, you know, looking for the best technologies we can acquire. And from that perspective, you know, if we think the speed to market is something for us, uh, which is extremely sort of important. And if you want to have, a, if you want to have the 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 this short uh, speed to market, then you are actually better off to uh, acquire uh, the best technology and then adopt it for your needs. And that's what we're doing also extremely successfully. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we're coming to the end of our allotted time. So I do have actually a final question, which will require me to share my screen, um, which I hope might happen right now. Let's see if it comes up. Is it working? Probably not. Let's see if we can. I definitely see it. <laughs> you can see it. Okay, so this is um, actually the senior management team of Caspi at uh, your 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 alma mater, Harvard Business School. And um, sticking out from under the sign, we've got a, a pair of very distinctive red shoes, uh, which have become, I think, quite famous um, in Kazakhstan. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Um, we can't see your bottom half at the moment, um, but um, we, we do wonder about the red shoes. <laughs> well, I mean, this, it's our logo is red. So in general, we, when we actually were developing our logo, we said that uh, red is the color for the business. There is no other color than red. So we choose the red as a color for the business. And I choose the red as a color for, uh, for, uh, for shoes. We had the red ties. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, actually, the reason why, because you cannot see my shoes, you see my red shirt, uh, t-shirt. So. There is always some sort of red. <laughs> we like very we like good. Color. It's a, it's a, it's aggressive, but it's also positive. Well, I, I had a, a meeting with one of your peers um, some time ago who was wearing a pair of bright yellow shoes. So I think you can probably guess who who that was. Um, <laughs> and um, Renaissance Capital's corporate color is a, a rather fetching shade of pink. So I'm now wondering what I should be wearing here. But Mikhail, sadly, our time is up. It's been my great pleasure hosting you today. We wish you and Caspi, all the very best for 2021 and beyond. Thank you very much indeed for your insights today. Thank you, Daniel. It was good to have you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.
AIX is the new gateway for investing in Kazakhstan and the Central Asia region. AIX provides a globally connected platform for companies to raise capital to support the growth of their business. For global investors, AIX provides the opportunity to access a new investment destination. For local investors, we provide the opportunity to invest in attractive businesses and to diversify their investments. AIX operates in a legal and regulatory environment which is familiar to international investors based on the principles of common law. AIX will be a key driver of growth for the regional economy, helping companies raise capital, increasing investment opportunities and ultimately increasing the prosperity of Kazakhstan and its people and the region.